What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more Idle Heroes guides and information. First, before we do anything in this video, we have to shout out June and Vince. You've probably seen this little infographic on Reddit last week or in Discord somewhere. It is an absolutely amazing breakdown on how to successfully beat Broken Spaces every month. We go over everything from how many tokens it should take you every month, how much health all the bosses have, what the optimal artifacts and enables are for certain heroes, and what the optimal type setup is for uh, for pretty much beating all the stages, especially the last two stages, as well as just a little bit of bonus info on how to save on badges as well. So just to start out, let's go over some of the basic stuff that June and Vince created in this guide. Just for a quick glossary, while we we're going through all these images, just remember DPS, those are, good, those are gonna be your damage dealers. The big hitters, the ones doing all the work. Priests are mainly just priests and healers. Granted, I will be adding a couple of things in the priest category as well that will help support your team. Um, there's, it, that, it's, it's interesting. Mainly it comes down to the hero carry coming out, but um, carry is very, very strong. And I'll, I'll tell you where she is the strongest. We have the buff heroes. So basically those are going to be the ones with the team synergy. Um, Sigmund and Deathsworn, you just need the burn. You need the burn to get maximum Phoenix benefit. You need to have the Phoenix. It's the most optimal way to do this. And then we also have Heart Watcher. So Heart Watcher is a 100% necessity, at least 9 or 10 star. Optimally, E3 is the best way to go. But it is what it is. If you have a lower one, just build it as you can. And then, of course, we will have... Um, most of these will show up the icons will show a 10 star but in the majority of cases especially in damage dealers they need to be e5 so what is the objective here the objective is as read right here we receive roughly 150 tokens a month for free just from your campaign so you get these badges from campaign your daily campaign make sure to optimally get resources you are going into your campaign and getting your loot every 10 hours the loot does not accumulate after 10 hours so that's really important information for people that are new to the game definitely get on there every 8 to 10 hours in game at least once on your account to grab that stuff um but yeah pretty much what we need to do is find the perfect sweet spot for your team to actually win if you cannot do it in about 150 badges a lot of the times it's good to save and just do the easy bosses until your team gets stronger but um it, it, you can also buy extra badges and sometimes it's worth it especially if you have the bonus loot coming your way with that that special card every month so let's take a look at the bosses now there's seven different waves and their health scales up pretty quickly so the first one should be easy even for free to play new players 239 million is not much to get past it's decent loot decent progression it's something everybody should do if you have a nine if you even have a five star heart watcher you're in a good spot to finish this you need the heart watcher definitely have them it ramps up to 2 billion then 7 23 41 83 and 101 so the big really damage check for your account is stage 4 the double Gru wave the reason why that wave is so difficult is because they lower your attack they lower your crit it's just a really really hard wave to get past then once you hit stage 5 you you get introduced to the CC wave so between Valentino and Jara they can really lock your team down with freezes stuns and petrifies so that you just can't do as much damage as you normally would purify the e3 enable is very very important in this situation now once you get to stage six you have even more cc coming your way with corpse demon freezes and oberon's twine and the big difference between five and six is six you will see a significant increase in damage coming in as well so once you get to six you really need to have your healer set up and you possibly need to throw in a carry as well but we will discuss that a little bit later and then stage seven is the same more damage not really much cc outside of um the uh 
Aspen's ability, his Horrify, but you also have to worry about Ada's uh, heal reduction. So that's really, really hard to get around. As far as artifacts and enables go, of course, if you have pay to win artifacts, things like Antler's Cane, Punisher Staff, Kiss a Ghost, those are all the top tier, perfect to use damage items. Um, one thing to note is anti-class items can be useful here, but the good majority of the waves have multiple classes in the wave, so they become a little suboptimal. You really want to try to hunt those Punishers, Kiss a Ghost, and, uh, <laughs> and definitely the, uh, the Antlers can as well. They're very, very strong. So mainly for the waves one through... <sighs> Probably one, one through three, you can get away with using the enables two, 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 one. Once you get into the stages four and later, purify becomes a very, very important passive um, enable. You need to run two, two, three, two, one. You absolutely need purify. Otherwise, you're going to be CC'd. You're going to be lowering your your damage you're doing, things like that. When it comes to your priest, your buffed, and your heart watcher heroes, you want to go for a straight tanky setup. Um, I would honestly just run one, one, three, one, two, all the time, every every single one. It's really, I mean, you're not getting much from the heal. You don't really need the heal, and of course, damage reduced artifacts or energy are very, very important. The team composition, uh, it's very, very important. You need to have two to three big hitting damage dealers on your team. Most of the time, one priest will be enough. Um, it kind of depends on where your progress is, how many E5 heroes you have. But one to two priests or support heroes are very good. You always, always need your Sigmund or your Death Sworn in your lineup. And Heart Watcher, of course, is necessary. When we get to stage one to six, um, it's pretty close to the same lineup, but I would make a few modifications if it was myself. I would definitely use two to three DPS as a minimum, but you can use a third or fourth one in there. If you're, uh, if all your guys are E5 and they have the last enable balance strike, you just do not need the healing. Um, your, your balance strike should be enough to keep your your damage dealers alive it really comes down to do your buff heroes like heart watcher live long enough if heart watcher doesn't live long enough then throw in something like a priest or one person i like throwing in this category as well carry carry at five star can do absolutely amazing things i'll put a link in the description to show you exactly how much carry can help um, in stage seven, and, and we uh, we dropped our E5 horse for a five star uh, carry, and we went from about one billion damage per fight, all the way up to at maximum six billion damage. That's six times more damage by dropping an E5 horse and adding a five star uh, carry, and just because our heart watcher was dying too soon, the heart watcher 300% damage buff is 100% necessary to do maximum efficient damage when it comes to broken spaces. Um, usually then, I would say, once you get to stage 5 and 6, depending on how powerful your team is, you do need that Priest. So you need an Amon Ra, you need a Bell Rain. Um, Gustin can do okay as well. Those are pretty much the necessary ones. On here, they put Ormus as well, but... In my opinion, I'm not a fan of Ormus. In, I, mean, I think it's just a waste to build an Ormus. I guess I would say Ormus is good if you absolutely cannot build a light or dark healer like Amun-Ra or Belrain. It's a good substitute, but I would not I would not use Ormus in the long run. You always need that Death Sworn. Uh, I'm, a, I'm fine, kind of a fan of Death Sworn if you don't have an E5 Sigmund. It's much easier because you don't have to worry about keeping your Sigmund alive the whole fight. Death Sworn will die, leave a burn on the enemies for 15 rounds, and so long as you're not using a Cthuga, you will do good damage with that damage buff. And of course, the Heart Watcher there. Optimal is E3. Um, required is at least 9 star, I think, for 4, 5, and 6. Uh, actually, just 5 and 6. 5 and 6 are the only ones you really need a, a 10 star plus 4. So now we jump down to the stage seven. So it is broken down two different ways because the popular way to kill Ada extremely fast is using Dark Arthendal. Um, Dark Arthendal absolutely destroys Ada. You usually end up winning the fight 
or I should say not winning the fight, killing Ada, and then you have to deal with Aspen, who has like somewhere between 40 and 60% HP still. But optimally, you will have a DA, and you'll have one or two other damage dealers, probably only one. DA and a Garuda, DA and Horus, something like that. After that, I would say there's two options. On here, they break it down with two different priests that you can use. Belrain or Ormus, and then also Amun-Ra and Gustin. Um, my opinion, personal opinion, and I'll, I'll make sure I put a link so you can see what carry does, is I would say Belrain or Amun-Ra or Gustin plus carry are plenty to lower the damage coming in for you to live. The whole point of carry is all of Aspen's and Ada's damage come from their active abilities. If you have carry taking away their active abilities, there is an extremely, extremely less amount of damage coming into your team. It can make your Heart Watcher live the entire fight, whereas you're losing your Heart Watcher normally around five, uh, around five or six, something like that. Um, definitely go check out the video in the link. It is a prime example of why carry is a god support in stage six and stage seven if you cannot keep your heart watcher alive if you can keep your heart watcher alive carry is not necessary use the bare minimum priest or carry to keep your heart watcher and team alive still you definitely need that death sworn i definitely prefer uh death sworn on stage seven simply due to the fact that it is so much easier to keep them alive but if you have a strong strong support team to keep sigmund alive for 15 rounds definitely do it because he will also have that armor stripping ability once you have the ada down if if you have a Dark Arthendal, you then need to swap it up to a different DPS hero and follow the same formula pretty much. Um, if you don't have a Dark Arthendal, the heroes are going to die pretty much at the same pace. So just use the two best damage dealers you have. Um, optimally, what I, what I did is I used, I think, Garuda and Aspen. I threw a 5-star Carrion. I had my E5 Amun-Ra. I had my 6-star Death Sworn. No, sorry, I think I actually used my E5 uh, Sigmund, yeah, and my uh, my 10-star Heart Watcher. And it's, it's, carry just does wonders for your team. But if you don't have any carry copies, you might need that second priest in there to help support your team. The last section down here, the extra info, are things that Vince and uh, June had a chance to personally test. Um, they're just interesting combinations they use that let them get certain certain token marks where they the minimum amount used. All of them are well under the 150 per month target. You have to remember these damage dealers are all E5. That is absolutely necessary to clear this. And just as a side note, since they decided not to talk about the scary army, um, typically the scary army, my team, if you've been watching this channel a lot, you've seen the the broken space challenges we do every month to see how few tokens we can use to finish all seven stages of broken spaces. And I believe last month our, I think we got down to about 56 tokens. So it's a huge investment building those scaries, but if you are just focused on PVE, they can do some awesome, awesome things for you. So definitely thank you very much, June and Vince, for letting me use your infographic to make a really cool Broken Space video. I kind of hope this helps out some of the newer players. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, if you have any questions or any comments or suggestions, drop them in the comments down below. I love the feedback. I, I think June and Vince might be working on an even updated version in the future, so we'll look out for that, and we'll definitely see if they'll let us make another video on it as well. But definitely check out their links in the description uh, to their Reddit info. Thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one.